Welcome. In this short video, we're going to look at an application involving the bond market. In this case, our application is going to look at the business cycle and how it affects the bond market in a way that produces pro-cyclical interest rates. So in other words, we have a question, and that is why are interest rates pro-cyclical? In other words, to be pro-cyclical, we mean why do interest rates usually rise during expansions and fall during recessions? The relationship isn't perfect, but it's there. The answer to that question really lies in the effect of the business cycle on the bond market. The effect of the business cycle on bond supply and bond demand produce pro-cyclical interest rates. Let's see how. As we proceed with this bond market example, let's remind ourselves that bond price and yield are inversely related. In other words, any equilibrium change that leads to a lower bond price means that interest rates are higher. Any equilibrium change that leads to a higher bond price means that interest rates are lower. So we start with a typical bond market diagram. Supply and demand intersect and imply an equilibrium bond price and interest rate and an equilibrium quantity of bonds. If economic conditions change, we would see this diagram change as well. During an economic slowdown, we would expect changes in bond supply and bond demand as borrowers and lenders react to changing economic conditions. With a slowdown on the demand side, we would expect bond demand to fall. Why? Well, there's going to be a decline in income and thus wealth during an economic slowdown. And with a decline in income and wealth, there's declining demand for all kinds of financial assets, and that includes bonds. So bond demand will shift left here. When bond demand shifts left, the price will fall and the interest rate will rise. So that's the demand effect. On the supply side, bond supply would also fall and also produce effects in equilibrium. Bond supply here is going to fall because there's going to be a decline in expected profits with an economic slowdown. So borrowing for certain expansions might not be profitable, they won't do it, they'll wait, and bond supply will fall. So bond supply would shift left, and when supply shift left, we get a bond price rise and an interest rate to fall. So notice these two changes have opposite effects on the interest rate. What's the overall effect? Let's see on this diagram. Here's where we started. So an economic slowdown would decrease bond supply. And here I'm drawing it as a pretty large decrease. So I'm saying that bond supply is really sensitive to economic conditions. At the same time we know bond demand decreases, I'm actually drawing this as a relatively small decrease. So while the bond decrease happens, the wealth effect here is not really large. So when I put these two together, what do I get? Well, the shift in bond supply being larger than the shift in bond demand, overall the bond price rises and the interest rate falls. So overall the economic slowdown, the decline in the economy, leads to a decline in the interest rate. And this stems from my assumption that the bond supply effect is larger than the bond demand effect. So why am I drawing the change in bond supply larger? Why do I think that's the right way to draw this? Well, changes in wealth are small here during the business cycle. So the response to the change in expected profits might be a lot larger. So we actually know, we have data that tells us that income changes are much more stable than investment changes. So that tells us that the shift in bond supply is a lot more sensitive and it should be larger in response. We see large cyclical swings in investment. So if we look at the data to kind of lend us a clue, we actually get some support for the idea that the shift in bond supply should be larger than the shift in bond demand. Here's some data that actually bears this out. Investment is more volatile than income in this graph. So I have a blue line of real gross private domestic investment, and I'm comparing that to real disposable personal income and notice that the income changes are much smaller than the investment changes. Income is more stable than investment, so the wealth changes will not be as large as the impact of the business cycle on bond supply. 
putting that together, interest rates are pro-cyclical. They would fall during recessions, they would rise during expansions. And for the most part, this is what happens here. So here we have a recession in 81, 82, 90, 91, 2001, 2007 to 2009. You see in these shaded boxes, we see the interest rate falls. And long expansions here, we see this period here, here, and here we actually see the interest rates are rising during expansions. So for the most part, interest rates are pro-cyclical. They move with the business cycle. Interest rates rise during economic expansion. Interest rates fall during a recession.